Hello and welcome back to another review video of Circuit Digest. In this video, I have something interesting for the beginners and IoT enthusiasts. Allow me to introduce the M5 Stack Core 2, which is a feature-rich ESP32 based development kit. Now, when I say feature-rich, I really mean it. This development kit has an integrated 2-inch capacitive touchscreen, an inbuilt battery and a lots of other interesting sensors packed into it. And on top of all this, it can be easily programmed with the Arduino IDE or MicroPython. So in this video, we'll be taking a closer look on this M5 Stack Core 2 development kit, explore its hardware features and also be testing a sample Arduino program on it. Also, at the end of this video, we'll be giving away this particular kit. So stay tuned to know how to participate in the giveaway. Starting with the unboxing, my unit was shipped with a small instruction card and the actual hardware itself. The instruction card has some useful links for some technical documents and community pages for the beginners to get started. Once you slide open the main box, you will be greeted with the module itself. And then along with it, you will also have a USB Type-C cable that can be used to charge and program our development board. So taking a closer look on the kit, we can see that it has a neat square shape with a TFT display on it, which is a 2 inch TFT display and it also has some buttons on its side. First look itself, we can see that the module looks very rugged with a neat enclosure and a display on top of it. As I told you earlier, this is a 2 inch TFT touchscreen, which is of 300 pixel cross 200 pixel resolution. And apart from that, you can also see three capacitive touch buttons over here, which can be programmed to function as required, meaning these are user programmable capacitive touch buttons. And then over this side, we have three more buttons. One is the power button, which can be used to uh, boot the module as well as to force shut down it. So if we hold this for six seconds, the module will shut down. And then we have the USB-C port, which can be used for programming the device as well as charging the inbuilt battery. So we also have a USB cable provided along with the box. So we'll be using that later in the video. And then finally, we have a port for connecting groove sensors. So if you need any additional sensor, you can connect them over here and it will work along with the module. So the board itself outputs a positive and negative voltage, PWM signals and all other stuff required to interface a groove sensor. And then moving on, we have a few more slots over here. One is an SD card slot in which you can insert up to 16 GB memory cards for data logging or for reading bitmap images from the SD card. Then we have a user programmable LED over here, which can be used to indicate the status of the battery or any other work. Again, it's user programmable. Then finally, a reset button here used to reset the module and check how your program is working. Over this side, we have the M5 logo and some openings for our speaker. And the board gets more interesting when you take a look on its back side. It has a sticker that mentions all the features of this board, so let's take a closer look on this. So the main brain behind this module is the ESP32 microprocessor along with a dual core Extensa 32-bit chipset which runs on 240 MHz with 16 MB flash memory and 8 MB PS RAM. Now this sticker has all the information about the hardware present inside the module. So if we move along, we can see that it is written as capacitive touch and you can see to which pins those capacitive touch buttons are connected to. Then we have the display driver IC's name, the two inch display driver, which I just showed you earlier. The driver IC is ILI9342C and you can also see to which pins of the ESP32 this driver IC is connected to. And then we have a clock symbol here indicating an RTC. Yes, the module also has an inbuilt RTC and the RTC IC is BM8563. And then something like shock is written here, which actually indicates the inbuilt vibration motor. So the vibration motor is connected to the PWM pin IO3. So that information is provided here. Then if we move along, we can see to which pins the I2C, sorry, the RTC is connected to. And then moving along, we have information about the battery and the power management IC over here. 
So we have the USB-C as, as a charging port and then this uh, USB-C power from the USB-C is given to AXP192 which is a power management IC. So this power management IC takes the power from the USB port and charges the inbuilt battery which is a single cell lithium polymer 390 mAh uh, battery and we also have a DC DC converter since this is a single cell it won't be able to provide 5 volts so we have a DC DC converter controlled by the power management IC so this DC DC converter provides 5 volt for all the peripherals and other sensors that has to be connected to this module we also have CP2104 which is a USB to TTL converter a famous one that we can find in most of the modules these days then moving along we have the NS4168 I2C amplifier IC which is used to play audio files on this particular module and then going along we have an arrow mark indicating here which says MPU6886 so this module also has a 6 axis inertial measurement unit and the arrow mark indicates to show that the sensor is actually present inside this expansion board. So the module has an expansion board let me quickly remove it and show you what's inside so if you can see the module has an expansion board already connected to it so these are all the gpio pins which you have access to and on the expansion board we have two sensors one is the inertial measurement unit which is mentioned over here and the other is a microphone so with this expansion board aside you can see all the other GPIO pins which you can use to interface other sensors or display modules or actuators as required for your application. So the information on these GPIO pins is also provided over here. So as you can see these pins are the ground ones, this is the battery pin, this is the 5 volt pin and other GPIO names along with its uh, peripherals are mentioned over here. So yes, this sticker pretty much provides a quick review on all the hardware specifications and important parameters of this module. I know it is already tempting to power it on and try some example programs, but before we do that, let's use this Allen keys to open these screws and check what actual hardware is present in it. And if we take a look inside, by removing the case, you can see the lithium battery that is used for power backup over here and this is the actual expansion board now let me quickly point out some of the important ic's that i mentioned earlier so as i told you we have a speaker inside the module and if you take a closer look you can also find another coin cell which is most probably for the RTC IC to keep track of the time and then these are the GPIO pins for these expansion header and then this IC over here is the NS4168 okay, it's messed up. going again and this IC here is the NS4168 I2C sorry I2S amplifier IC and then over here we have the BM8563 RTC IC and this is the main ESP32 chipset and then over here we have the USB2104 USB IC and uh, uh, as I told you this is the lithium polymer battery for the power backup and over here we have the AXP192 power management IC so these are the important hardwares if you want you can proceed and remove this board outside by using these uh, by removing these screws but we are not going to do that for this review so now we know how the entire hardware system is now let's put everything back together and we will power the device on to see how it works now this example unit already has the demo program into it when it got shipped from the factory so all we have to do is press this power button and you can see the device getting turned on now you will get an error message called sd card find failed but you can ignore that because we are not going to demonstrate with an sd card for now so just touch to skip and you can get into the main program 
So this is the demo program that you will get when the unit gets shipped to you. Now it really has some interesting features which demonstrates all the hardware uh, functionalities. So the first thing you can see is the RTC time. Now of course this is not the right time because I haven't set the right time yet. So but once you have set the right time the RTC keeps track of the time. And then we have a small animation here to show how uh, effective the TFT display screen can be. And then over here you can see uh, the current battery voltage 3.7 volt and the charging option is now disabled. If you connect a charger this thing will turn to green. And then over here you can see uh, the touch information that is the X and Y coordinates of where you are touching the screen. For example, if you are touching it over here, you can see the location was X was 165 and Y was 072. So this is something very important that you will use frequently when you are programming the device. But uh, let's get back to that later. And then uh, as you might have already figured, this thing indicates the sound bar. So the microphone that I showed you earlier picks up the sound and it shows the graphs uh, based on the sound. And then over here we have the MPU 6866. Uh, which moves as I move the module you can see the box inside it moving to get a better view you can click on it and you can see that the inertial measurement unit picks up the orientation of the device and does a small animation to show it's working and then going back uh, we have the Wi-Fi symbol here which on clicking will scan for all the available devices nearby and it's uh, a signal strength so let's go back and then in the settings screen we have some interesting things like uh, you can check or uh, you can enable or disable sound so now it's disabled enabled again and then the motor option is used to check the inbuilt vibration motor if I turn it on I'm not sure if you're able to hear let me place it on the microphone so yes so it has an inbuilt motor let me turn it off and then the TFT option can be used to check the color of the TFT and if we go back we have a stopwatch function and so this the main idea behind this is to uh, demonstrate the different functionalities of the board. So now that we have explored how these example programs work, it's time to learn how to upload our own programs into this M5 Stack Core 2 development book. To do that, we will be using the Arduino IDE for this review video, but you can also use MicroPython for the same purpose. All you need is your Arduino IDE installed on your laptop and this programming cable which got shipped along with this package. On your Arduino IDE, get into File, Preferences, and make sure this URL is placed inside the additional boards manager URL. You can also find this URL in the link given at the description of this video. Once that is done, click on OK and then get into tools, board, boards manager and then search for ESP32. Now my board is already installed but you would have to install it for your system. Once that is done, click on close and then let's install the libraries required get into sketch include library and then you should find manage library over here get into that and search for code 2 so search for m5 core 2 and install that as well again mine is already installed so i'm just going to click on close once that is done, we are ready to try out some example programs. So let's get one example program for M5 Stack Core 2 from File, Examples, M5 Core 2, Basics and Touch. So what this program does is that it just gets the current X and Y values similar to the example program and displays it on our TFT screen. We also get to write few commands like this, to, uh, set the color of the LCD and then we are just simply going to write uh, what is the value of x and what is the value of y. So let's click on upload. Now before you do that, make sure you have selected the right COM port and you have selected the right board. 
as you can see our code is just got uploaded you can see the information over here let's check out the output on our device so this is the new example program that we just uploaded as you can see the display shows our display test which was the string that we uploaded in the program and now wherever you touch the x and y coordinate of that particular place will be getting updated on the display apart from that we can also use these capacitive touch buttons to change the color of the text for example the first one will display text in red the second in green and the third in blue so this is a simple text a test program that you can uh, use to check how the display is working again the main motto was to know how to program your devices and as you saw it is very easy to program these modules from your Arduino IDE with this I am concluding my review here but with an exciting development board like this I could already think of a lot of IoT projects which we can easily build and test what do you think let us know what you will build with this development board using the link given at the description of this video and if the idea is interesting enough we will ship this board directly to you hope you enjoyed the video if yes give us a like and also subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos i will see you in another video with another exciting development board until then take care and bye bye